saying the situation could have been catastrophic if someone with ill intent had gotten so close to the president. But King isn't stopping there. At his request, the committee has also asked White House Social Secretary Desiree Rogers to appear Thursday. King wants to know why someone from her office wasn't helping stop uninvited guests from entering the state dinner. Committee member Eleanor Holmes Norton put out a release this afternoon making it clear that she wants a chance to grill the Salahis themselves. She calls them, and I'm quoting here, headline addicted, practicing con artists who bamboozle the Secret Service, serial scam artists, and the next installment of this drama plays out Thursday morning before the House Homeland Security Committee. Wolf, back to you. Uh, we'll obviously have coverage of that. Uh, Gene, thanks very much. Uh, the chairman of that House uh, Homeland Security Committee, by the way, uh, the, the man who will be chairing the committee uh, will be joining us. We're talking about Congressman Benny Thompson of Mississippi. Uh, I'll be speaking with him today uh, here in the Situation Room. I'll be asking him what his uh, panel hopes to achieve by having this hearing. That's coming up. Also, did these uh, accused party crashers previously crash another event in Washington that the president attended. We have some new information on that that Brian Todd is working on, so stand by. Much more on this story coming up here in the Situation Room. Other important news, though, that we're following today involving Iran. It's president speaking out today about his country's nuclear ambitions, and he had some pretty strong words for the West and Russia over international efforts to get Tehran to stop expansion of its suspected nuclear weapons program. CNN's Reza Saya has more. Well, if this was vintage President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, he was brash, self-assured, and remained defiant in the face of growing pressure from Washington and Western powers who have condemned Iran for continuing to enrich uranium and not cooperating with the UN's nuclear watchdog, the IAEA. In a marathon live television interview that lasted more than an hour and a half, President Ahmadinejad once again said Iran is not planning to build nuclear weapons, but will continue a peaceful nuclear program and not back down to pressure from the West. At times, President Ahmadinejad actually chuckled at what he called propaganda and lies from the West. He wasn't as tough on the U.S. as he's been in the past, saying Iran had not seen positive change in U.S. policy. The president did not take it easy on the U.K. and Israel, accusing those two nations of deceit and derailing the recent IAEA proposal that Iran had agreed to in principle. That deal would have had Iran sending out most of its enriched uranium in return for nuclear fuel designed for medical research. Uh, president Ahmadinejad said Iran pulled out of that deal because of a climate of condemnation. He also said Iran was not bluffing when it comes to the construction of 10 new uranium enrichment facilities as far as the possibility of a fourth round of economic sanctions and military action president Ahmadinejad brushed off those possibilities saying any hand that will pull the trigger on Iran that hand will be cut off Wolf Reza Saya, thanks very much for that. Uh, we'll continue to monitor what's happening in Iran. Uh, we're about three and a half hours away from President Obama's uh, speech tonight, uh, finally revealing his new strategy for Afghanistan. But some are wasting no time already criticizing it. Uh, we're going to get uh, what uh, the reaction from Senator John McCain. Uh, he's speaking out forcefully today. It's a bit of a lecture to President Obama on how to win a war. Stand by for that. Also, police announced their decision regarding Tiger Woods. After his crash, uh, he will be punished, but uh, you're going to hear precisely how much it's going to cost him. All right, opportunity. We'll say you're looking for it in new places, like working with a supplier in China and a manufacturer in Germany to reach new customers in the U.S. Well, UPS can help bring it all together with efficient solutions like paperless invoice that can help make customs of breeze. Hey, the opportunities are out there. Seize them with UPS. You know, it's hard drawing those perfect circles. China. It really means made in China, made with the world. 